Okay, this is the final video of our series on capital assets. Uh, in the first three videos, we learned how to do straight line amortization, double declining balance amortization, and finally uh, units of production amortization. Uh, this video, we look at selling an asset at a gain and then at a loss and, and how to deal with the journal entries of, of selling an asset. Uh, so let's read through the question and uh, it's a pretty straightforward asset purchase and then we sell our asset a little bit later. So on March 23rd, Tony Inc. Uh, buys a new Volkswagen Golf for $22,000. This is my dream car. I've been pricing them out, thinking about them, but I haven't bought one yet. Anyway, uh, I'm pretending I bought it today. Um, he expects it to be useful for 10 years, after which time he expects to sell it for $2,000. The company has a December 31st fiscal year end and wishes to use straight line amortization. Uh, on June 5th, 2013, Tony Inc. sells the car for A, $21,500 or B, $16,000. Prepare all the required journal entries for the life of the car under scenarios A and B above. Okay, so we're going to buy a car, we're going to amortize it for a little while, and then we're going to sell that car and uh, we'll see how to do all of the journal entries for an asset uh, for kind of the life of this asset. So the first thing we've got to do is buy the car. Uh, the day of course is March 23rd 2012 and we buy a car let's assume for cash uh, that's how I'm gonna buy my car I'm not a big financing guy so I'm going to say hey I got a car debit car 22 thousand bucks and we're going to credit cash twenty two thousand dollars so we got our car marvelous now we've got to amortize it our fiscal year end is December 31st and that's the next relevant date so again March 23rd is a relevant date because we buy the car then we kind of keep the car we drive it hopefully enjoy it uh, until December 31st when it's our fiscal year end and we, we've got to do journal entries. Now we haven't sold the car on December 31st but we have amortization and, and we've got to record the amortization entries up to December 31st. So it's our fiscal year end, it's December 31st 2012 and I need to amortize my car. So how do I amortize? Well I gotta look back maybe watch the old video on straight line amortization but if you recall I take the cost of my car minus the residual value and remember that residual value is the amount that we think we'll be able to get out of our asset at the end of its life so it's kind of what's left over from our asset when we're done with it and when we're done with this car we think we can sell it for two grand that's our residual value cost minus residual value equals amortizable sorry my writing so bad amortizable cost and our amortizable cost here is $20,000. Uh, so, okay, we're going to be able to amortize this car for $20,000 over its useful life. And its useful life was 10 years. So $20,000, we are doing straight line amortization, so the number of years matters. $20,000 divided by 10 years equals $2,000 in amortization per year. So now we're in year 2012. We've owned the car from March 23rd to December 31st. Uh, this is where, again, there's differences between methods and techniques. I've encouraged my students to round to the nearest month. So March 23rd, we're going to pretend is March 31st. So when I'm counting my months for amortization, I won't count March. I'm going to start with April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. I'm going to own it for nine months in 2012. Now, a lot of classes, you might use something called the half year rule, in which, which means in the year of acquisition, we just pretend it's six months, no matter what. We just do a half year, and it all kind of comes out in the wash anyway. That's very commonly used in practice. In, in my text, they round to the month, so I, I want to be consistent with my textbook. So anyway, we're going to do nine months worth of amortization. So we have this $2,000 asset. We want to amortize it for nine of the 12 months of the year. 2,000 times nine twelfths, I can even do this one in my head, is $1,500. So our amortization for fiscal 2012, our amortization for the nine months between when I bought the car and my fiscal year end is $1,500, but I got to do journal entries. So I've dated it already. Maybe I'll date it again just to remind myself. It's December 31st, 2012. I'm going to debit amortization expense $1,500 and I'm going to credit 
accumulated amortization. And there's a very good chance your prof will make you write it out. Accumulated amortization or accumulated depreciation on the car. And again, that's $1,500. So we've done basic amortization. Now, in the question it tells us, on June 5th, 2013, and we'll do part A first, Tony Inc. sells the car for $21,500. So before we actually sell the car, we need to amortize it up to the date of the sale. So I've already amortized it to December 31st, 2012. I need to record amortization between December 31st, 2012 and when I sell it. And so that would mean I need to record amortization for December 31st and to June 5th. I need to record it for January, February, March, April, May. Again, I round to the nearest month, so I'm not going to count June. I need to amortize this asset for five months. So on June 5th, 2012, I need to amortize this asset. Oops, my amortization here is going to be, it would be 2000 if it was a full year, but I didn't get a full year in. I only got 5 out of 12 months. Going to need my calculator for this one. I can see it's going to be a 0.333 type of answer. 2000 times 5 divided by 12 is, yeah, 833.33. So 833, we'll round to the dollar here. So let's do our amortization again. It's debit amortization expense credit accumulated amortization on the car for 833 bucks okay now might be a good time to check in on the value of our car according to our books our book value of our car so the book value of our car is the cost minus the accumulated amortization so our car minus our accumulated amortization on the car equals the car's net book value. In this case, our car was worth uh, $22,000 when I bought it. I've My accumulated amortization, that's accumulated, means built up amortization. So the amortization built up on my car so far is 1500 plus the 833. Uh, 1500 plus 8, oh, that's such a bad 8. 833 is uh, 2333. So, according to my records, my car is worth 22,000 minus the 2333 in amortization. My car is worth 19,667. That's the net book value of my car. Now let's look at scenario A. Scenario A says we sell the car for 21,500. Well, this is wonderful news. We have an asset that we think we valued on our accounting records at 19667. Uh, we're selling it for $21,500. In this situation, we're going to experience what's called a gain on sale. We sold the asset for more than it was worth. And you'll see in scenario two, when we sell the car for $16,000, sorry about the line, when we sell the car for $16,000, our car we say is worth 19667 we're going to experience a loss on the sale of the car let's deal with our gain first i'll try to squeeze it in over here and then we'll deal with our loss on on the next uh, part or the next page here so i'll do a journal entry just in the bottom right here so again it's june 5th and i sell my car and here's what i'd like to do you to do whenever you sell an asset Assuming you sell it for cash, debit the cash. Get that out of the way. So we sold it for cash. Of course, we got cash. When I get an asset, I debit that asset. Um, so I'm going to debit cash. Let me just zoom out here a bit. I'm a little bit worried that my big head in the bottom right is going to block my answer, so I'm <laughs> making it a bit smaller. Uh, so debit cash for the amount of money we got. We got $16,000. Now, I've got to get rid of my car. So I got to credit my car. And to get rid of the car, it was on the books for 22 grand. Let's get it off the books. Credit car, $22,000. Oh, I, I think I've answered the wrong part. I'm answering part two instead of part one. Ah, I'm going to change that. Debit cash for 21500 I want to do part A. So, pardon me. Debit cash, not for 16 That's in part B. We'll do that in a minute. Debit cash for 21500 
Credit card for 22000 Now we've also got, got to get rid of any accumulated amortization on the car. And to get rid of it, I debit it. Again, when I set up my accumulated amortization, you can see here I credit it. And I credit it here to set it up. Now I've got to get rid of it. I get rid of the car. I get rid of its related accumulated amortization. So I debit accumulated amortization on my car for the amount, the total amount that's accumulated, 2333. And now you're looking at this and you're saying, okay, I got the money. I got rid of my car and its amortization. I'm done. And we're almost done. We're not quite done. The only thing missing now is the fact that our car, in fact, I'm going to slide this over a bit. Uh, our, our journal entry doesn't balance. Pardon me. So I have 21, 23, 833 in debits. I have 22,000 in credits. I'm missing a substantial credit here. The credit goes to gain, or if it happened to be a debit I was missing, it would go to loss on sale. So I'm going to gain on sale. Uh, and I credit that for the amount that makes this balance. I credit that for, uh, let's see, it was 23,833. So the missing debit is 1833. So we gained 1833 on our sale. Now I hope you can see that looking at the numbers too. I had an asset on my books for 19667. That's that's the value of it on my books. And I got paid $21,500 for it. I got paid $21,500 for something that was worth $19,667. I'm $1,800 to the good. I have a gain on sale of $1,833. Gain on sale is a revenue on the income statement. It's like an other revenue. So it's, it's kind of a weird revenue, but it is a type of revenue on the income statement. That's it for the gain. Let's have a look at the other scenario. And I'm just going to get a blank sheet here. And so everything's the same in the other scenario up until that last entry. So again, we have a car. Oops, pardon me. Let me get my pen tool out. Uh, we have a car and accumulated amortization on our car. Uh, our car is worth $22,000. The accumulated amortization on the car so far was $23.33. Everything's the same up until that sale journal entry. So again, we have a car that's worth $19,667 on our books. That's our cars net book value and now we sell it but rather than selling it for twenty one five we're gonna sell it just for uh... sixteen thousand dollars i believe so let's see yes uh... we sell the car on june fifth for sixteen thousand dollars let's go ahead and sell our car so we do the exact same kind of methodology as before we get money for our car so i'm gonna debit cash for however much money i got sixteen thousand dollars I'm going to get rid of my car. So I'm going to leave some room because I know there's going to be more debits coming. I'm going to credit my car to get it off the books. And it's a $22,000 asset that's leaving the books. I'm also going to get rid of its accumulated amortization. Accumulated amortization is a credit account. To get rid of it, I need to debit it. So let's debit our accumulated amortization on our car. 423.33. Now again, we're done, right? We got the money, we got rid of our car, except for our journal entry doesn't balance. Uh, I have 18,333 in debits, I have 22,000 in credits, I'm clearly missing a big debit, and that debit is to our new account called loss on sale. Just like we have a gain on sale, if I'm missing a, a credit, if I have a loss on sale, I'm missing a debit, and, and here we are. So debit loss on sale for the missing amount. The missing amount is I had an asset that I thought was worth 19667. I only got paid 16,000 for it. Therefore, I came up $3600 short. Our debit to loss on sale is 3667. Uh going back to the question, just making sure I date this thing properly. It was June 5th, 2013. So I should date my, my final journal entry there, June 5th, 2013. So now I've kind of gone over selling assets, either at a gain or at a loss. 
Uh, in part A, we sold it for more money than it was worth on our books, more money than the net book value of the asset. We sold it for $21,500 and we experienced a gain of $1,800 and change. Uh, in part two, we sold it for less money than the car was worth on our books and so uh, we experienced a loss. If gains are revenues, losses are like expenses on the income statement. Well, they are expenses. And uh, they're also classified as other expenses. They, they go below the line. They're not, they're not operating expenses of the company. They're unusual kind of expenses. So that's all for this video. That's all for this series. I hope this has been helpful in showing you how to amortize uh, capital assets as well as a basic sort of loss or gain on sale transaction.